Hello guys and welcome to this video. So continuing our discussion about diuretics, this is the final video in this series and it is about the osmotic diuretics uh, and those drugs, their use is limited to emergencies because they have a lot of side effects that we are going to talk about in the next slides but we also are going to talk about the pharmacokinetics, the mechanism of action, the therapeutic uses, and the adverse effects of these drugs. So let's start. Uh, so first, let's talk about the types of these agents. So osmotic, diuret osmotic diuretics are uh, drugs or agents that uh, cause uh, that are osmotically active, so agents that are osmotically active and they lead to increase in the osmotic pressure. And we have the famous agents and the most common, commonly used agents in this group, which is the mantle. So when we say osmotic diuretics, we mean we are referring to the mantle. And we have also uh, materials that cause osmotic diuresis inside the human body, such as the glucose and the urea. The glucose cause osmotic diuresis in patients with hyperglycemia and this is a classic with people who have that who who have diabetes so diabetic because they have uh, they usually have polyuria which is caused by the osmotic diuresis caused by the hyperglycemia and we have also the urea as an example of the materials that cause osmotic diuresis inside the human body so now let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of these drugs. So we have uh, mannitol. So if it is taken orally, it leads to, uh, it is not very well absorbed by the GIT system. So it would cause osmotic uh, diarrhea uh, rather than osmotic diuresis. So osmotic diarrhea. So it is usually not taken orally to cause osmotic diuresis. It's actually taken intravenously and it is not metabolized and it is excreted through the kidney. Excreted by kidney in uh, 30 to 60 minutes. And this is the time frame by which the mannitol works. Uh, now let's explain the mechanism of action of this uh, of the mantle. So it works on the kidney. So after it get it get absorbed, it goes into different parts of the human body, including the glomerulus, where it is going to be filtrated into the Bowman capsule. So the mantle would be filtrated through into the uh, Bowman capsule and into the proximal convoluted tubule and it goes with the filtrate and it leads to increase the osmotic pressure inside the filtrate because it is osmotically active material so it would lead to increase in the osmotic pressure inside the filtrate and it would prevent the water from getting reabsorbed so usually the proximal convoluted tubule would reabsorb the water and also in different sites of the nephron uh, but in case of the of using mannitol some of this water is not going to be able to be reabsorbed because the mannitol increase the intra increase the uh, osmotic pressure in the filtrate and this would lead to the water getting excreted into the urine and would lead to osmotic diuresis. Now, this uh, the mantle cause 
water diuresis rather than the natural diuresis so it would excrete the water but without the sodium so this would give us hypernatremia but it is relative hypernatremia which is called dilutional hypernatremia because the water is the sodium content inside the human body is the same but we execute the water from it so it would give us relative hypernatremia which is called in the medical terms dilutional hypernatremia so this is regarding the kidney now it also works on other parts of the human body because when it is taken intravenously it goes into different sites of the human body and it would increase so if we have vessel here let's say uh, and the mantle comes into this vessel it would lead to increase the osmotic pressure intravascularly <coughs> and the osmotic pressure extravascularly is lower usually so it would lead to the water flows from the uh, extravascular into the intravascular because uh, this is uh, the water usually or the fluid moves from the lower osmotic pressure into the higher osmotic pressure and this would lead to different effects so it would lead to uh, dehydration because it uh, drains the fluid from the cells into the intravascular space uh, but it also it also lead to uh, therapeutic effects like uh, relieving of the brain edema because it drains the fluid inside the edema and it also leads to the relief of the acute uh, closed angle glaucoma which is the an ophthalmic on ophthalmologic emergency so acute closed angle glaucoma that we are explaining in the next slides so this is regarding what it does into the different parts of the human body now let's talk about the therapeutic effects so it works to relieve the brain edema and the mechanism that we explained earlier because it drain the fluid into the intravascular space and this fluid will go into the kidneys where it got excreted so it relieve the edema by draining or reabsorbing the fluid from the edema and it read to it, uh, executing this, this fluid uh, by the kidney. It also works in the closed angle glaucoma now how closed angle glaucoma develops well uh, inside the eye we have the ciliary epithelium where the uh, the aqueous humor is produced here and it goes through the pupil all the way into the trabecular meshwork here where it got reabsorbed in closed angle glaucoma the iris the angle between the iris and the cornea will be closed so this angle will be closed and the aqueous humor would not be able to get reabsorbed and this would lead to congestion of the eye and uh, it also leads to a very uh, severe pain and uh, also blurred vision and lead to systemic symptoms like nausea and vomiting and we usually have uh, a lot of therapy lines to this condition including the uh, osmotic diuretics which is the mantle and this would lead to draining some of the fluid uh, from the eye into the intravascular space and it would uh, relieve the closed angle glaucoma to a certain degree yeah now it has a lot of side effects that we mentioned earlier it causes dehydration inside the cells uh, because it drains the fluid into the intravascular space it also causes 
dilutional hypernatremia as we explained earlier because it drains the water without uh, the sodium so and the this would lead to dilutional hypernatremia Now it also leads to extracellular water expansion. So as we mentioned earlier, it drains the fluid and it also drains the fluid from the cells. Let's say we have those cells here. So the, this would lead to the fluid going out of those cells and into the intravascular space. And this would lead to the fluid uh, drained into the intravascular space and if the patient have a heart failure a compensated type of heart failure this would lead to decompensation of uh, their condition uh, because the the patient is used to a uh, certain amount of fluid in their in their intravascular volume and if we use osmotic diuresis Automatic diuretics, we are increasing that amount of fluid. So this would lead to decompensation of their heart failure uh, and would lead to pulmonary edema and different other uh, problems. And with that, we are we complete the pharmacology of diuretic series. We are going to talk about different drugs after that. I'm so excited to make those uh, playlists and videos for you uh, to understand the different uh, drugs that we use in medicine so thank you guys for watching uh, please like and subscribe and share the videos with your colleagues and thank you very much peace